December 3rd, 1971, Midnight, Vishakhapatnam Harbour. The unexpected and startling sound of an explosion broke the idleness of that peaceful night and terrified the residents. Some buildings along the coast had their window panes smashed by the blast. The sound was obviously coming from the sea just east of the harbour. Prime Minister Indira Gandhi had only declared war on Pakistan a few hours before. Many people believed they were being attacked as part of the war. However, it was only later that they learned how it was only a planned operation carried out by the Indian Army. It was the sound of an exploring PNS Ghazi, a Pakistani Navy submarine, which was waiting to trap INS Vikrant, the Indian aircraft carrier outside Vishakhapatnam Harbour. The destroyer of the Indian Navy, INS Rajput, put an end to it. The hunter itself had been hunted down. In this video, we look at the exciting story of how the Indian Navy trapped Ghazi in the trap set for Vikrant. The British Empire sailed from here by slashing her into inflicting unhealed wounds. That is India and Pakistan. East Pakistan and West Pakistan were two territories alongside India's left and right. But Western Pakistan, the headquarter of the ruling elite, used to see East Pakistan as a colony province. There was a widespread outcry in East Pakistan against this. The protests reached their peak in the 1970s. However, in the Pakistani general election held on December 6 that year, the Awami League led by Sheikh Mujibir Rahman swept the polls and won a majority of seats. But this was not acceptable to the West Pakistani leaders. Heavy protests were launched across East Pakistan against this. Under the leadership of Mujibir Rahman, from the first week of November 1971, the situation in the East Pakistan got worse. Expecting an Indian military action there, the Pakistani government planned countermeasures and issued a high alert to their troops. But the news from East Pakistan worsened for Pakistan with each passing day. The most significant of them was the report that a large number of Bengali soldiers serving in Pakistani military submarine fleet had shifted their allegiance to India. The Pakistan Navy's efforts to ensure adequate security along East Pakistan's coast suffered a huge blow because of this. The Indian Navy had already deployed a large force in the Bay of Bengal, headed by the aircraft carrier INS Vikrant. Ships flying from West Pakistan to East Pakistan were not even allowed to enter the region. All three arms of the Pakistani military stationed in East Pakistan faced problems because of this complete naval blockade. The Pakistani army was well aware that if they continued without enough supplies or backup, they would be easily defeated. The only option that they had was to destroy the Indian Navy's pride, INS Vikrant. According to then Pakistan Navy Chief Vice Admiral Muzaffar Hassan, Destroying INS Vikrant would not only break the Indian blockade, but also impair the Indian Navy's morale. Hence, he asked the Pakistan Naval Operation Department to come up with a plan to destroy INS Vikrant at any cost. Admiral Hassan's decision was to assign his flagship submarine, PNS Ghazi, with the task. The PNS Ghazi, a 10th class vessel, was the largest submarine of the Pakistan Navy at that time. Pakistan bought the submarine from the United States as part of a Cento military pact. A team of 93 sailors operated the massive submarine, which weighed 1,570 tons and measured 95 meters in length. The submarine's brass two sonars were capable of identifying even distant targets. In addition, it had tubes for launching 28 heavyweight torpedoes. All these features made PNS Ghazi the most powerful submarine in Asia. PNS Ghazi set out from its home port, Karachi Harbour, at midnight on November 14, 1971, as planned, in search of Vikrant, which was stationed in the Bay of Bengal. 
two orders were given to the submariners. One, locate and eliminate Vikrant and its escorts. Two, scatter mines outside the Vishakhapatnam's harbour, thereby destroying any Indian Navy ship that is likely to come for replenishment. The Pakistani Navy chief had instructed them not to return to Karachi without achieving both targets. Ghazi's mission was practically a suicide mission. But the deployment of the Ghazi was being monitored by the Indian Navy. The Indian Navy deployed special frigates and submarines in the Arabian Sea to find and destroy this submarine. This measure was taken as the Indian Navy believed that the highly dangerous PNS Ghazi would pose a major threat to Indian Navy ships in the West and East. However, the voyage of PNS Ghazi to the Bay of Bengal, which was thousands of nautical miles away from Karachi, by evading the watchful eyes of the Indian Navy was not at all easy. The Ghazi's trajectory was through the central part of Arabian Sea, where there are no Indian ships. It then sailed towards the south, near the coast of Sri Lanka, and then entered the Bay of Bengal. However, the Directorate of Naval Intelligence detected the presence of a Pakistani submarine in the southern Indian Ocean after tapping Ghazi's communication signals at an Indian Navy's signalling station in Tamil Nadu. They immediately forwarded the information to the headquarters in New Delhi. The Indian Navy was well aware that the Pakistani naval fleet at that time had only one submarine capable of travelling this far off the coast of Pakistan. Moreover, the Bengali submariners who had served in Ghazi in East Pakistan defected to the Indian side and gave information about the submarine to the Indian intelligence. Armed with this knowledge of Ghazi's presence, the Indian Navy issued orders to its own ships in the Bay of Bengal to be watchful and also intensified its search for the submarine. At the same time, Vice Admiral N. K. Krishnan, commander of Eastern Naval Command, calculated that Ghazi's ultimate goal would be the Vikrant. Thus, Vikrant, which was berthed at the Madras port, was moved to a safer location in the Andamans. The Arabian Sea is full of lagoons and the submarine cannot stay hidden in the clear water here. Admiral Krishnan also had the firm support of S.M. Nanda, the then Chief of Indian Navy. In the last week of November 1971, an Indian Navy ship patrolling the seas east of Madras captured a radio message on their communication transmitters. It was an urgent message that Ghazi sent to the port of Chittagong in East Pakistan asking for a special type of lubricant that is used in submarines. And thus, the presence of PNS Ghazi in the Bay of Bengal was confirmed. Navy Chief Admiral Nanda instructed Vice Admiral Krishnan to set a trap for Ghazi. Even if this very dangerous submarine stayed in the Bay of Bengal for just a few days, the threat it posed to the Indian ships was not trivial. So, the Indian Navy wanted to trap Ghazi before it could move further north. Vice Admiral N. K. Krishnan and his team decided to set an effective trap for this. The plan was to trap Ghazi on the shores of Vishakhapatnam. For this, an old destroyer that was marked for decommissioning was brought to Vishakhapatnam. This ship, the INS Rajput, was purchased by India from Britain in 1948. Nevertheless, the ship had all the necessary equipment, including 21 torpedoes and 70 depth charges for anti submarine operations. The next step was to send radio messages from the Rajput radio room as though it was coming from INS Vikrant to other Indian ships stationed in the Bay of Bengal. By intercepting these messages, the sailors of Ghazi rushed to the Vishakhapatnam harbour to attack Vikrant. On November 25th, 1971, the Indian Navy's communication intelligence towers in southern India located PNS Ghazi off the coast east of Madras. The naval intelligence had located the submarine as it intercepted a radio message that was sent to Ghazi's home port in Karachi. 
Ghazi's message was that INS Vikrant was in the harbour of Vishakhapatnam and that they were ready for the mission. Based on this information, the Indian Navy's Special Anti-Submarine Warfare Task Force conducted an extensive search along the coasts of Madras and Vishakhapatnam. But Penis Ghazi, with its excellent navigation systems and sonar, deceived them all and continued its search for prey in the depths of the Bay of Bengal. However, even after a search that lasted a week, the Indian Navy's ships could not find Ghazi. With that, they left the shores and expanded their search to the deep sea. But the Penis Ghazi was lurking off the coast of Vishakhapatnam without being seen by the Indian ships. Amidst all these events in the Indian Ocean region, Pakistan launched an airstrike on India on the evening of December 3, 1971. The proxy war that the two countries waged till then suddenly became a direct one. The Eastern Command of Navy based in Vishakhapatnam then decided to deploy all its ships in the Bay of Bengal for military operations. But every move had to be made with extreme caution assuming that the presence of the Ghazi was still on the coast of Vishakhapatnam. The Eastern Naval Command decided to bring the ships out of the harbour by midnight that day. But Vice Admiral Krishnan's strategy was to put bait first to trap the Ghazi. He chose INS Rajput for this mission. He summoned Captain Inder Singh, Rajput's commander, explained about the presence of Ghazi in the vicinity and instructed him to leave the port with the ship as soon as it was refueled. As scheduled, after refueling and turning off the lights and other navigation systems, INS Rajput exited Vishakhapatnam Harbour at midnight. Rajput then set sail by sending heavy transmissions similar to those sent by huge aircraft carriers. At this time, the PNS Ghazi was waiting outside the harbour, scattering mines in the area. For safety reasons, all signals were off, so the submarine went into periscopic depths and observed the harbour. Suddenly, they noticed a destroyer rushing towards them. Ghazi soon sank to the bottom of the sea and attempted to sink deeper into the deep sea. But when Rajput came out of the channel, they noticed a strong movement in the water in front of it and rushed towards it. The captain immediately applied depth charges on the assumption that it might be Ghazi. One of the depth charges fell into the torpedo room on the front side of Ghazi. The result was a powerful explosion. Rajput was also badly damaged in the blast. Within a short time, Ghazi got buried in the depths of the Bay of Bengal. Ghazi, which arrived in Vishakhapatnam as the largest submarine in Asia at that time and challenged the Indian naval power, is still lying on the seafloor with its unfulfilled dreams. The strategy devised by our naval leadership to trap and destroy such a modern submarine with an old destroyer must always be celebrated. Even today, Pakistan refuses to accept that Indian Navy had destroyed Ghazi. But this will remain as a shining example of Indian war planning forever. Jai Hind!